Good, ed good afternoon, everyone. My name is Tony Sauerhoff. <clears throat> I'm the uh, Deputy State Chief Information Security Officer and the uh, State Cybersecurity Coordinator with um, the Department of in State Department of Information Resources. My name is Will, uh, William Wallace. I am a business development executive for Artem Technologies. We're a local uh, IT firm dedicated to those who do or don't have IT individuals on staff for your company. So in regards to the company's IT. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Todd Vassalou. I'm a cybersecurity advisor with the Cybersecurity Infrastructure Security Agency um, out of San Antonio, Texas, but I do cover down in the greater San Antonio area. I'm um, glad to be here and welcome. Perfect. Thank you, guys. So real quick, just hopping right in, I want to see a show of hands. How many people are uh, business decision makers, CEOs, or business owners, if you don't mind raising your hand? OK, thank you. Now of y'all who have raised your hand, how many of y'all have a dedicated IT individual on staff for your company? OK, more than I anticipated, actually. <laughs> so for y'all who uh, didn't raise your hand, think of that person who is the go-to IT individual on staff. When you're thinking about this, what concerns or what exciting things come to mind when I say cybersecurity? We can go around the room, just raise your hand if you have something that comes to mind. Yes, sir. Would you mind saying that again? Hacks. Hacks. OK. Is that to any specific case? Or is, are you thinking just your email gets hacked, your account gets hacked? Those are great business points. email compromise. Yeah, absolutely. I'll let y'all go ahead. Do y'all have any thoughts? I can take it up after that. Yeah, sure. Uh, I'll say I'll say first to the email, just as a, as a, as a as a I'll start out by saying it's a joke, but I but I've told folks that 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 if someone sends you a nice email and asks for a bunch of money, and you send them a bunch of money, please don't call that a cyber incident. It makes it makes me look bad. Um, but uh, I, I understand, I understand. So um, I'll start, you know, um, a big concern for me, um, especially when we get into to, um, small, medium business type si uh, entities. I work primarily with the, with the 7,000 plus uh, local government entities across the state of Texas, more, much more on the, on the public uh, side, public sector side for me. Um, but it looks, um, that space looks a lot like um, small to medium business as far as how cybersecurity is done and, and who's responsible or if someone is responsible, um, what's being done. And I like to start and, 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 and try to get folks to understand <coughs> that, um, that, you know, there, there's no such thing as secure. Right um, there, when it comes to cybersecurity, there's no such thing as 100% secure. It doesn't exist. Right, um, our most um, secure federal agencies have been have been hacked, um, and none of us in this room are spending um, near as much as, or, or will spend near as much as they are spending on cybersecurity. So, um, so, but, so, so with that in mind, you know, um, we all have to make a decision to draw the line somewhere. Right, um, in every organization, we all have to decide where's that line, where's that lot level of acceptable risk for us, right? And um, someone has to make that decision. Someone in a, in a position to, the, the, to, to be able to make that decision for the organization should be making that decision. All too often, that, that decision is left to um, IT folks or, or cyber folks, some, some, some technical folks, whether they're in-house or whether they're, they're, it's an MSP or MSSP, right, a, a third party, um, and, and, and those in, in um, leadership positions, whether it's public or private sector, just kind of, you know, are, 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 are blind to, um, they just, you know, like to go along and think that we're okay. Either I've got this, this person or this team taking care of it, um, or I've got this, this external company taking care of it for me, and, and we're okay, right? Um, it's really, really important to understand that there's, there's no such thing as secure. And um, you've got to be involved. Um, 
not at the super technical detail level of things, but, but to, to the point of understanding the things that your company is doing in the area of cybersecurity. Um, but more important than that, the, the things that you're not doing, right? The things that you're not doing, because by, by choosing whether you know it or not, whether, you, whether, you, whether it's explicit or not, um, you're not doing everything that you could possibly do. Um, I promise you that. Um, and, and, and by choosing not to do um, some things, um, the choice not to do some things is a choice to accept the risk that those tools or systems would have otherwise mitigated, right? Um, so you're choosing to accept risk, um, cyber risk, um, which, is, which is business risk, which is risk to your business, right? You're choosing to accept cyber risk um, whether you know it or not, by making a choice to, to not spend money or, or implement a tool or a process or something. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll pause there and, and pass it down. Sure. No, and I think that was, you said that wonderful. That was, that was great points to it. And uh, from the other side of the perspective, oh, some of the branches that I work with are MSP, MSSP. What that means is we are the outsourced version of your in-house IT department. So the dedicated people that you may outsource to saying, I'm not gonna hire an individual in-house, I wanna branch out and uh, outsource for that need. And so with that, taking that initiative step is one factor to that point. You bring up some, some big uh, topics that a lot of people ignore. It's downplayed how often you get fake emails or spoofing emails, like you're saying, um, phishing attacks, just fake emails that are pretending to be either be vendors, prospects, clients, your employees, any of, any of that sort. Um, personal experience, when I, I started, uh, I got a fake email that said from last name, first name of the owner, uh, hey, I need your social because this is you know for the business purpose. Now I knew to catch that because our email addresses are not built last name, first name, it's first name, last name. And so that's one small you know thing that you can notice, but to the common eye, or if I hurried, I would miss that. And so that plays into user error on the email attack. Um, you know, there's resources out there to minimize the attacks. What they do is they analyze the patterns, they analyze what's going on, and they put that into play. They say, hey, this is, these are the factors that we need to take, a, uh, take a attention to, and let's make sure that they're neutralized, not, not coming into the environment. And like he was saying, they're gonna work 99% of the time, and then it becomes into user error. What are you doing to training your staff, your individuals, your vendors? How are you holding up on liability? Do you have cyber insurance? You know, these are all conversational pieces that are talked about with a lot of companies in the small business era where it's, uh, you know, you're thinking about business, you're thinking about operations and how you can increase income. Who's thinking about what's coming in and out of your emails? Uh, emails? And then what information is in your emails? And then who has access to what email? Think about the people and vendors that you've, you know, interacted with. Who have you sent an email to? Okay, now what if someone thinks of your username and maybe a common password? Now who's gonna have access to that? Who you've talked to, what information's been out there? You might have invoices, bank roll, or I'm sorry, uh, bank account information, or just personal information, home addresses, you know, and so, things like that. So with those, it's more of just uh, exploring your options on resources, making sure that you're always educating yourselves, because even IT individuals can't stop, uh, you know, threats are ever growing, because their mission is, hey, someone beat us, how do we get better? So on the opposite side, we as the good guys have to think about how can we best the bad people time and time again. And I, be I believe the question was, what does cybersecurity mean, right? We're asking that, what it means to people. I just wrote, so, sure. what, so what, I think that was the question I posed earlier, but uh, so what, that to me is, is uh, resiliency and maturity within your cybersecurity program. Now I know a lot of you probably have an ISP that handles a lot of your, your telecom or your, in your network, you know, admin, if you will, uh, but bringing them into the fold and, and being part of, of that, that conversation and having a buy-in to that. So a leadership buy-in or executive leadership buy-in, management buy-in is always a key part of cybersecurity within organizations. And as the owners and operators of these companies, that's, that's a primary focus of yours as well. And as it was mentioned you know, earlier, you should have, it's not your job to be cybersecurity or, or IT, but you should have a vested interest in it and understand some of those, some of those, uh, those nuances within there. Um, training and awareness is huge. If that is something that you're not focused on right now in your organization or your company, I would look into programs that could help you with that. Uh, 
making your workforce trained and aware, bringing them up to code as far as what is and what isn't acceptable within cyber, you know, in your company, clicking on things, uh, ransomware, phishing, training, et cetera, uh, and things of that nature. Uh, email security is another one. Um, it, what email provider are you using? Um, and do you work with them? Do you set controls within your email environment? Likewise, with your, your web environment, if you have an external facing web server or something of that nature. I'm hoping I'm sticking with the, the, yeah. with the question set there, <laughs> but yeah. And CISA pro provides a number of different resources uh, for small, medium, and large businesses. Uh, they're all no cost, free resources uh, that come in the form of assessments, workshops, tabletop exercises. Uh, we do speaking events. We also have other advanced um, uh, services that we can you know, act on your behalf and have those provided to you with regards to remote pen testing or other types of, of uh, security uh, vulnerability testing platforms that we can provide. But, uh, but yeah. yeah. Todd mentioned training, if I can say real quick, Will. You know, they're, they're, you could do your own quick Google. Um, there are a lot of stats out there that range um, from 60 to 90 percent. How many, how many, um, how many breaches, um, successful attacks, um, begin with a phishing email, and it's in that range. Depending on the the source that you find for the for the for the numbers, it's in the range of 60 to 90 percent. Um, a really high percentage of 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 those things that we hear about those so successful uh, ransomware mm -hmm. incidents, they start with our people clicking on something that they that they shouldn't click on. Um, you know, it's it's uh, we're never going to get to 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 zero on that. Um, but we, we, we still have a lot of work to do there um, in, that, in that area. You know, to the point, uh, one story that I, I uh, find interesting to relay about a customer experience is um, there was an incident one time where I received a call from a lady who is a single uh, owner of a company, uh, no employees, so the only individual uh, CEO of a janitorial company who called and claimed that her mouse was moving for her while she was activating her bank account and then trying to push funding from one account to another. So what had happened was she clicked on something she shouldn't have and by that way, you know, called a few numbers because she was trying to figure out what's going on, gave too much access to the, uh, the cyber threat. And then from there, they were able to access, pull up a web browser, go to her bank account because it's in the history and she probably saved her username and password. So they got into that access real quick. And then from there, they were able to see bank funding, millions of dollars, push it to another account. Uh, now she called us while you know this incident was playing out, and so it was a quick response that we were able to assist her with and stop the threat before it finalized the, the transactions. And obviously your banks are gonna do what they can on their end, but at the end of the day, it's, it doesn't matter the size of the company, how many employees you have, what's your vertical, you could be a janitor, uh, you could be doing whatever, and the only person working in the company. It's the value of the company to you that is valued by the threats. So they're gonna see you as a monetized ability. What information do you have? What money's there? What assets are available? And they're gonna utilize that at any cost. So that goes into most likely the email attacks. She probably received something she shouldn't have and clicked a little too many things and uh, delivered some user error that almost ended horribly for her. Do we have any other thoughts off of uh, cybersecurity when we bring that up? Bring up that topic? Yes, sir. Absolutely, compliancy, that's a great one. I think you guys would be a great one for that. Um, as far as compliance goes, yeah. Um, anything specific in that area? Yeah, you know, if, you, if you're taking credit cards, you've of course got PCI requirements, right? But I, I think, you know, for me, it, 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 it all goes back to um, it's just another type of data that, that you're protecting, right? It's, it's, um, it's um, may, maybe more important to you than, than other types of data that, that you take, that you handle and process, right? Um, but, it, but it's data. Um, and, um, you know, we can get into, um, you know, you get into data classification and categorization, and and how we might, how we might um, have different levels of protection. Um, you know, within the organization for for the different types of of, 
of, of data that we process. That's a little bit, you know, some advanced topics, uh, you know, um, for, 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 for most small businesses, but, but it, it all, it all, it's still all data that needs to be protected, right? So it still starts out with training, right? Training your employees. It starts out with, with patching your systems, right? And this, this it, it applies to everything, right? It applies to whatever kind of data that we're protecting. Um, patching your systems, um, anti-malware or EDR or endpoint detection and response type things, right? Um, making sure we have good backups, um, securing, securing our Wi-Fi, right? Um, limiting, um, limiting what employees can access, right? Based on what they should have access to. Um, removing an employee's ability to install things, right? Is something that, that, that you know, do, I'm just running down the list of some basic, you know, best practices. Um, you may or may not be, be limiting um, you know what employees can install um, on their on their laptops or computers in your in your organization. Um, best you know best practice is is um, employees just can't install whatever software they want to install, right? Even if you have a policy that says they can't, they're going to, right? Um, for starters, and, and, and gone back longer than it was a cybersecurity issue, it's a help desk issue, right? Because when employees can install whatever they want. Then we have more problems on, and the help desk has more issues to deal with. When everything is 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 built and set up the same, all of our systems, it's easier to take care of. But 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 getting into the cybersecurity side, you know, uh, folks don't understand, and uh, a lot of users don't understand that. You think it's IT or cybersecurity folks just want to kind of control everything, and and um, you know when when um, we all we, we talked about the the I talked about the. Um, how many breaches start with a, a phishing email, and um, you know the the goal is to get that as close to zero as as we can, but we're not going to get to zero, um, and um, so so mistakes will happen, um, and the idea back to the, the employees not being able to install software is just one of of, of many things in our kind of the defense in depth strategy, right? That the, the, the lots, lots of different things that we do, but if an employee can't install software intentionally on their laptop, right? Um, hopefully they also can't install something unintentionally, right? That's the idea um, from a cybersecurity standpoint behind taking away that ability. That doesn't mean that that's all we have to do and then it doesn't matter if they click on something or not because they don't have the ability to install things. Um, but that's, that's why. So um, multi-factor authentication, another one, right? Again, I'm just kind of running down um, the list of best practices, whether it's whether it's PCI or, or, or PII or PHI or other kind of uh, protected data or, or, or any other data that's just important to you, right? Um, some of the things that, that you want to think about. No, that's a great question. Um, and to that, I, I think for the room, it's uh, we're talking about compliancy. So medical field, it's more HIPAA, PII, uh, dealing with call centers, you got to deal with what the other customers are, uh, information they're retaining and giving. Um, and looking through this, it can go a different couple ways. To the core, get an evaluation. There's companies, you know, we do this, you can go elsewhere, you can find companies everywhere. Uh, what they do is they're going to go investigate and do a breakdown of what your company has, what assets are where, and meaning how easy is it to access these assets. So when you're talking about PII, uh, personal information of individuals, whether it's, you know, the first name, last name, home address, social security card, you know, birthday, whatever. These are traces that can lead to accounts, passwords, their credit card information. You know, there's trails and accounts on the black market that are building a case on these individuals. So it's in best practice to limit any kind of access to any of this information. All that to say to what you're asking about how inexpensive it can be for, you know, 
uh, what's called encrypting data, just to code it, mask it digitally, um, is to do a number of things, but it starts with an evaluation. It says, you know, what, what is set where and how easy access to it. You might utilize SharePoint, OneDrive, Google Suite, you know, uh, different, different areas to store that data. Now, how, who can access what data? And then from there, why can they access that? How easy is it to them, for them to ask it, or access it? He mentioned uh, two-factor authentication. It's a software base where you can go a multitude of different ways. And all it is is saying, hey, are you sure you're the person that signed in? It's normally when you go Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, any accounts where you put your username and password, and then it sends a notification to your phone or your email or gives you a call and says, hey, we're giving you a number. Can you put that in? Uh, and this is to protect you from saying that, you know, my password goes given out and you have access to this information. Um, now to the personal side, someone could calls in, there is technology out there where it is uh, uh, pretending to be other people. They're uh, making fake voices, fake accounts, and uh, trying to build credibility to gain credentials so that they can steal information. To blockade that, it's like he was saying before, policies. You need to enact and make sure that people know, hey, you could get a phone call. Just because you get a phone call doesn't mean you give out credit card information. They need to walk through a process that we have vetted and made sure that this is the way to do it. Uh, because we know we have these assets and we need to utilize them in this form, and then there's this software to protect us in the, in the long run. Um, now with the, the software conversation, it goes everywhere in price range. It's, uh, it's as much as you wanna invest into your company, basically. And so that can be for applications. Are you using um, QuickBooks or you know, a different version of that? Or uh, you know, what are you doing for operations, inventory, accounting? You know, these applications are, are weak points too. Email accounts, uh, your login for different accounts on online or app on your desktop. Um, and then from there, protecting the endpoint, the environment, your network. You know, you might have a server or you might not. And so you need to make sure that all ends are covered in that kind of sense. And I, I hope that answered your question. Perfect. So yeah, back to the data, right? Um, and protecting that. So when we talk about data, right, we're talking about an asset. So we need to have probably a policy around that. And that's what we recommend is developing policy. And then under that policy, we're gonna have documentation, right, and procedure. Um, and having an a asset management plan is probably one of the best things you can do to start working on, you know, inventorying what you have, whether it's your people, right, your, your, your people you work, you work with or work for or work for you, uh, your information, which is your data, your technology, which is all of your you know, physical you know, tech that you have, and then your facilities. And you wanna be able to know what you have, know where it is, uh, and that includes your data, all that data information you have stored. You know, are you encrypting you know, uh, at rest? Are you encrypting in flight? Uh, do you have uh, you know, so storage? Do you have secure storage for that data? Um, but it all starts with a policy and a plan. And you need to jot that stuff down. You, you need to have continuity there uh, so it keeps you in line and it, Bring, you know, kind of just carries along, so. Awesome. Any other thoughts on cybersecurity? Any concerns? We'll go you and then we'll come over here. Yes, ma'am. Oh, absolutely. No, that's a great point. A lot of businesses, big and small, are working remote right now. <clears throat> and so with that, you have the home environment to deal with. And what that means is you don't have a company firewall, physical device sitting there saying, hey, this is what's coming in and out, you know, to filter out traffic. First off, again, I would recommend advisement. Just do an evaluation, have, talk to a professional and say, hey, I need to understand what I've got, what you would think I need to do, and then from there, how do I upkeep with it, keep things up to date, up to par, fully protected as IT uh, develops. And then from there, from what it sounds like is looking into different resources such as like a virtual firewall. It means that you don't have to buy your own device, but there's um, solutions out there that do it virtually to protect what's coming in and out and you know, start filtering out just junk that you don't need in your environment. 
this can come from you know web based it can come email filtering you can update what email source you use uh, whether it's outlook you can update your licensing it costs more than free but that's sometimes necessary for these kind of topics and then you know same for google um, and so you can uh, approach it in that sense and then you know if you grow your your uh, uh, company to more individuals you know more people if they're still working from home you got to talk about what devices they have what they're allowed to do um, and then what's filtering through their content as well and that can look like company devices or policies and enact software onto those devices um, it's just up to your preference from that point and then back to what I originally stated on the advisement from there they can help push uh, you know antivirus or basic softwares that will help protect your own device and then that way as a company you know people understand that your business is coming from an IP address from your home uh, it can filter that, make sure that you're protected on that front. Um, you know, home devices are not set up to protect. They're set up to be efficient and simple to use. And so as a business, you need to approach it as a uh, business decision. It's not go to Best Buy, get a laptop. It's get a professional device that is built for your profession kind of deal. Yeah, I'll, I'll just add, you know, we'll, we'll talked about advisement and, and, and um, I, 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 don't, I don't know, you know, how... You've got to have someone that 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 that, that knows that understands cybersecurity and, and what you need to do, and someone that can advise you, and someone that you trust, whether that's someone on your staff or um, or uh, a, a, you know a, a vendor, um, you know third party. Um, someone's got it. You, you need someone helping you out and um, telling you what you need to do, and and um, ideally prioritizing recommendations based on best practices, and you know helping you to um, make that decision, you know, on where to draw that line that, that I talked about a little while ago, right? Um, you know, starting at the, at the top with, the, with, the, with those things that, that, are, that are priority number one. And, and um, well said, it's, 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 it, it costs more than zero, right? So, um, but uh, I, I, don't, I don't know how you can do it without having someone that, that, that understands cybersecurity and that you, that you trust. Um, helping you out and helping you make rec making recommendations and and um, and helping you figure out where to draw that line where it's, where it's best for you because that that line is drawn it's a different place for every every business every organization right um, um, there are a lot of variables that, that go into it, making that decision so only you can make that decision for your organization but there's a you know there's another um, stat that I remembered just a few minutes before we came in and I, and I looked it up. As I mentioned, I don't, I don't talk a lot with, with private sector folks, mostly public, but I, I, I looked this up again because I didn't remember the, the exact numbers. But according to um, the National Cyber Institute, 60% of small to medium businesses that, that suffer a successful attack go out of business within six months. Um, and that's one that you can do a quick Google on as well. 60% um, of SMBs um, go out of business within within six months of attack. So um, you know, I, I, I mentioned that as we're talking about things that that cost more than zero, right? Um, but that needs to be weighed against that that real risk to the the, the life of your business, right? Um, and what is that what is that worth to you? And to caveat off of that, right, uh, home office considerations, use a virtual private network, using a VPN, uh, updating and patching when appropriate on your systems. Um, antivirus, obviously, make sure those that you have some, a, a reputable antivirus on, on your systems. And then if you have or you, if you have the means, uh, uh, endpoint detection and response company, if you can do something like that where you have a agents that are deployed out to your end, you know, to your endpoints of you all your employees, and talking about someone that can help you, those folks will help you. And for small businesses, their prices are scaled. 
Uh, and there's lots of reputable companies out there, but it's something that uh, definitely gives you peace of mind, and you actually have, you know, something, someone helping you and watching your environment for you. So I would consider, you know, researching that, looking into some of those vendors that provide those services, uh, and then and seeing if that is within your means or if that's in your budget to do so. Absolutely. And I'll, yeah, let me comment on something you just said there at the end about um, not being able to afford something, and that's something that I, dealing with a lot of small. Uh, local governments across the state is is, is an issue, and and um, you know I've tried to make the point um, to folks, and and you know something like it's you know time to buy um, you know a, a school district or a city or a county is um, wants to buy some new laptops, and um, you know if if they if they um, you know they have enough money to buy a hundred of them with with. Um, if they have, if they include EDR, right, endpoint detection and response, kind of next gen antivirus, if you will, right. Um, but they want, they need more than that. And if they, if they, if they, if they don't get EDR, they, they, they'll buy, they can get 150, right. And I'm just making up numbers here for the point. Um, all too often, they'll, they'll still today, they'll make the decision to buy the 150 um, without EDR. Right, and and I try to make the point that um, if you can't afford 150 with EDR, then you can't afford 150. Period. Right. Period. And and we've got to get there. Um, and um, with with not just with laptops with EDR, but but all of the things that we need to do with cybersecurity. It's too easy to not do it. Um, there's nothing forcing you to do it. Right. Um, um, we have to get to the point, though, that, that um, we look at it that way, that if we can't afford um, to do uh, something, if we can't afford to do the, the minimums, um, then we can't afford to do that thing, right? We need to rethink, we need to rethink what we're doing. Uh, we need to rethink how we're, how we're doing business and how we're handling our data and where we're storing our data and, and, and those kinds of things. Does that make sense? Yes, ma'am. What's the gap? Well, the gap is how do you secure, you okay. don't understand okay. how to secure our lives. Physically? We're talking physically? Yeah, physically. Mm -hmm. Physically. Because so. many, I would say many of us contractors, um, <coughs> provider contractors, we are global, we go from different sites. Yeah. But that, that's, that's still one of our problems. Well, how do we secure our device? I mean. Our actual laptops. Yeah. It, Best practices, keep it on you, keep eyes on it. Don't leave it in a car, don't leave it in a hotel room. Uh, if you're traveling overseas, you know, be careful there as well. Um, but I mean, general, you know, basic security that you would do for, you know, a wallet or a purse or any other type of, you know, valuable item, 
uh, from a physical perspective. Now, storing, you know, physical, I, you know, but um, maybe gents have some more on that as well, but. Uh, well, I, I agree with, 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 with what Todd said, but I would, I would, um, I would say follow your, your, your company policy, right, as, as far as that goes. And if, and if you think that, if you, if you identify some issues with it, you know, report them up. Um, and, um, but if, but, um, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not, I, it, lot, lots of folks, um, you know, can, can have different opinions on, on where a gap, what a gap might be, um, what needs to get done and, and, you know, versus, versus what's getting done. I would just recommend, um, having been an IT cyber guy for, for 30 years and having dealt with, with lots of employees over, over the years. You know, I would just I would just recommend reporting that up and 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 following your you know your company policy is as develop the policy. I got you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Build policy, documentation, right. yep. and continuity. Yeah, and to add on to that, um, I want to ask your question with a question. So when talking about the risk or the gap of your physical hardware, your actual laptop, is the concern more about it getting stolen or lost? No, it's not, that's not the concern, it's stolen or lost. But if it does get stolen or lost, right. we and still want to have some form of protection on our actual right. en encryption. So, yeah, and encryption. It's, the, it's the threat of when it's stolen, what they have access to? Is that more of what you're thinking on the, uh, of the gap? Yes. Okay. Yeah, no, absolutely. And it's a good concern. Um, because a lot of the times you have only a simple password on your computer and there's ways about where they don't even have to guess it. It's just they might, uh, I forget the term, but send a bunch of passwords to it until they get the right one. Um, and so with that, a single password isn't enough. You can put ways, there are uh, softwares and ways to put 2FA. Uh, we're going to keep saying that, honestly, but it's two-factor authentication onto your device to where every time you log in, you get notified and said, am I this actual person? Yes, go ahead and log in. No, deny me. And then from there, they have access to your, either do or don't have access to your data. Um, and then with that on top of that, another concern I would say is, are you backing up? Is your data backed up to where you can get it? Because if it is, that's great. Okay, perfect. It would just be making sure someone's monitoring that, make sure the backups are actually backing up and that they are protected backups, you know, because a lot of times people will get a backup, don't know if it's really working, turn around, need it, and then they don't have it. Um, so watch it, you know, getting reports and looking at your backups to make sure that it's working, as well as encrypted, because if someone comes over and steals your backup, you know, what's the point then? Um, so to that, I would say, you know, uh, two-factor authentication would be a big factor, uh, a first option for that kind of deal. Just to make sure I mm -hmm. heard I think there's, yeah, Okta and, and Duo, I think, those are, are some the platforms. Big ones. I don't recommend those. I can't legally, but those are two <laughs> that you can, that I know of that I've used in the past that uh, you can yeah. research those companies, and I'm sure they have, you know, pricing for, for, your, for your business yep. uh, scale. So um, mm -hmm. but they're great uh, avenues. So you would basically, yeah, two-factor two, yeah, two, two authentication. Well, and on top of that, you said you have a Mac? Yeah. That's a great one. They, they're very big on privacy. Uh, I believe they have in-house, either they have a 2FA or they have a recommendation for it. And so you can definitely look in through Mac. Mm -hmm. we, Absolutely. I think we just have a, a few minutes left. And I, I wanted to mention, um, Todd had talked about a, a, a number of free services that CISA offers uh, for small businesses. And I, and I recommend you look at, look at those. Those are great. Um, at the state, um, we have a lot of we, we we have a lot of free offerings for public sector folks. Um, unfortunately, not 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 so much for for private sector. Except there's one that that I wanted that I wanted to mention to y'all, and it's the it's the Texas ISAL, or the Information Sharing and Analysis Organization. It's you it's TX dash I S A O. If you just write down those six letters, TX dash I S A O. Google that; it'll get you to our page. It's a um, it's a uh, it's free to it's free to sign up. It take and it takes about it takes less than you know three or four minutes. Um, we've got currently about two thousand members. Um, we have monthly um, via Teams monthly meetings. Um, 
Texas, Texas A&M is an ISAL partner and they give a threat uh, intel update during our monthly call every month. UTSA is a Texas ISAL partner and they give an educational update during our meetings every month. Um, it's a great resource. Um, it's free. Um, we, have, um, we have a secure portal that all of our members have access to that can allow you to ask questions of other ISAL members. And, and share information. And so it's a great resource for, for folks that don't have their own, um, you know, kind of in-house expertise and, and large teams. So Texas ISAL, I recommend you take a look at it. Yeah, absolutely. Also, um, if you the Center for Internet Security, or CIS, they provide some great services as well as another free alternative uh, with, you know, they, could, they have resources, no-cost resources, and advisors that can come to talk to you and have conversations about your environment and provide some advice. Uh, where CISA, uh, where we will we'll come out, we'll do assessments, uh, we'll start, we have a crawl, walk, run methodology with our assessments to kind of get you going, get you understanding your environment so you know what you have, what you don't have. Uh, workshops that'll work to help you and your your team to kind of mature together to understand the concerns and the threats that are out there and then we do tabletop exercises as well where we can take your whole team and put them together and see how you respond to an incident uh, along with other resources so great resources from from DER from from CISA uh, and from uh, CIS or CIS uh, so I would look into all three of those avenues for for you know free resources there um, yeah absolutely I know we have uh, three minutes left, it sounds like. Any last minute questions? I was just gonna ask, uh, so the, the question uh, that you had um, about the laptop, should you also be very careful with how you're handling your other mobile devices? Um, as well, as an example, uh, it didn't have to be what I heard was happening. Uh, when you use a public USB port, sometimes there's Don't use a USB port that's the USB cable that's already hanging out of the wall, right? Yeah. Um, don't uh, you know? Ideally, don't plug your USB cable into a USB port in the wall, right? Use your little white, um, you know, block, um, power block. At least, not, not nothing's nothing's impossible, right? But it's it's much harder for for um, for someone to to, to kind of jack into your system, whether it's your laptop or your phone or whatever, if if you're if you're plugging in through the you know power block versus plugging the USB directly into the wall. Yeah. And to that, one of the basic most common things that you can do to protect your mobile device, iPads, iPhones, you know, Android phones, whatever, just update, 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 update. Apple's very good about privacy. I'll say that again. Android does a lot of developments. Either way, let the companies fix what they broke. They're going to find bugs in their system. They're going to find, you know, cracks in the wall. Update your phones, update your devices, and that will help better secure your uh, device as well as furthering your education. And then at the end of the day, as a business owner, there, are, there is software out there, mobile device management, to where you allow company policy to enact onto devices, whether it's restricting access, restricting what's going on, separate agent watching what's going on. You know, there's further measurements that you can take to kind of dive into that. Stay off public Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. Don't get on Starbucks Wi-Fi, right? Yeah. Use your hotspot on your phone. 